In the sphere of fundamental principle, we have to consider the violence which is inevitable in the existing relationship. If violence with its culminating peak in war is undesirable, it is so because it is a principle withholding man from the attainment of a higher and purer state of being. If violence between men is undesirable, how much less desirable is violence done by men to utterly helpless creatures? Again, the cheapness of human life cannot in a complete analysis be separated from the cheapness of animal life. The only sin, said Emerson, is limitation. We err and we err greatly when we limit the application of abiding principles to one section of the world's inhabitants. Animals share with us the habitation of the globe and they are as entitled as we to the benefits of a natural and developmental evolution. We who might learn much from them and who might with love aid them in their evolution offer them not love, not even tolerance, but a philosophy which is exemplified by the steel of the slaughterer's knife and of the bit in the horse's mouth. We conduct against them a war of aggression, even less principled than the wars between men. Truly he who says he loves peace cannot love peace wholly if he turns upon his fellow creatures in an act of slaughter. One of the experiences of one who humbly and deeply seeks the truth is that when higher feelings pervade his mind, he is unable to confine their application to the human race alone. When Paul Brunton, writing of man, refers to the immeasurable or infinite that pervades his measurable being, he goes on to say that it speaks of his oneness with all that lives, whether in the human or animal kingdom, and hence inculculates the primary duty of universal compassion. In the sphere of positive evidence, there are those rare but revealing glimpses of the way in which man's evolution is aided as the result of a reformed relationship with nature. Man has somehow slipped in this relationship, with undesirable consequences to both nature and himself. He is out of tune with nature. He bears a relationship to her which might be likened to a geographical fault. If he could return to his rightful place, if he could approach her as a friend and a lover, instead of as a dissecting botanist and a murderous overlord. The resultant harmony would constitute a tremendous and incalculable evolutionary gain.